These images of legs illustrate the kind of complaint that brings the patients to our practice. Treatment options are numerous. The first choice for most physicians is injection sclerotherapy. Even though technology brought safety to lasers, they are still used as a secondary tool. But why that? Don't modern transdermal lasers work? There are two important aspects, the effectiveness of the laser shot and its selectivity. This experiment displays the selective photothermolysis very well. In fact, they work so well nowadays that only the vessels are affected while the skin is spared. But the key element to succeed when treating veins with lasers is diagnosis. Diagnosis will allow correct classification and proper direction of the treatment. We understand that misdiagnosis of invisible feeder veins is the problem. There are three ways to clinically understand the presence of feeder veins behind telangiectasias. First is direct visualization, second is decompression test, and third is treatment failure. Subsidiary exams always increase the diagnostic resolution, like phlebography that was widely employed in the 70s, good room illumination and transillumination, duplex scan which is the ultrasound, and now the use of the vein viewer. Back to the same image, let's evaluate the lesion again under a different perspective. The vein viewer allows the visualization of feeder veins that are normally too deep for the naked eye and too shallow for ultrasound detection. It also gives the practitioner a 50 cm headroom for manipulation. We conceive this practical classification table to place the venous context. The patient receives a score from 9 to 1 in the decreasing fashion of complexity. 9 is the most severe while 1 is the goal to be achieved. 1 means no varicosities or telangiectasias. Following the table, on the first line, varicose veins with any kind of reflux from the saphenous vein. On the second line, varicose veins with no reflux from the saphenous vein. On the third line, no varicosities. For the rows, the first on the left, telangiectasias combined with feeder veins. On the second row, telangiectasias devoid of feeder veins. And on the third row, on the right, no telangiectasias. This classification helps us to select the treatment plan in a glance. Scores 9 to 7 generally need a more invasive initiative. Note that patients scoring 2 generally give the best results for any kind of sclerotherapy for the absence of feeder veins and varicosities. Ultrasound is the tool to pinpoint reflux on the saphenous vein. This, associated to the vein viewer imaging, led us to group lesions that demanded different treatment modalities. As we all know, a patient with feeder veins may have no complaints of heavy legs nor edema, but may surprisingly present insufficient saphenous veins during ultrasound scan. Thus, the ultrasound truly establishes if the patient scores 9 instead of 6, 8 instead of 5, or 7 instead of 4. For the borderline cases, photoplethysmography is important to evaluate the meaning of the reflex for a given patient and validate the ultrasound findings towards venous insufficiency. The vein viewer is crucial to find invisible feeder veins, preventing misdiagnosis of combined telangiectasias. Thus, the vein viewer truly establishes if the patient scores 9 instead of 8, 6 instead of 5, or 3 instead of 2. The laser we use nowadays is the 1064 Harmony. And to numb the skin, we use the Cryo 6 cooling device. Two cases are here presented to demonstrate the way they are treated in the daily practice. This patient scored 6, which means telangiectasias, varicose veins and feeder veins, but with normal saphenous veins. 
session begins with the treatment of varicosis and feeder veins, guided by the vein viewer with laser under air cooling. After the laser treatment, the vein viewer shows eligible spot for a second pass and for complementary dextrose 75% injection sclerotherapy. This whole procedure is called CLEX. CLEX is an acronym for cryolaser combined with cryosclerotherapy. Here are the results after four sessions. On the following case, also a score 6, which is by far the most common, there were still thicker varicose veins and feeder veins, but with normal saphenous veins and effective calf pumping. Conclusion Using clax guided by the vein viewer, we were able to avoid phlebectomies, formerly our first choice for patients scoring 6, in 86% of 140 patients scoring 6 to 3 on the table you've seen. And more importantly, avoiding complications like skin ulcers, anaphylaxis and embolism. The vein view exposed feeder veins in such a way that gave us a new perspective and comprehension of leg veins.